And now I want to return to the extent function and inspect what d is in this case, now that we've transformed the date and attendance column. Notice how I've put a debugger statement in the anonymous accessor function here, so the execution will stop and be stopped for every row in our data. Let's go back to the web page and see what that looks like. Refreshing the page, we see here our first debugger got caught. If we click the play button, we'll jump past this break statement and happen to catch the break statement in the extent. Since execution stopped in this function, the scope is the same scope at this point in the code. Notice here that there's a single argument d to this function, so we should be able to access d in the console since we have a debugger statement there. Here we can see d corresponds to an object that has the following fields in it, one of which is the attendance, and there's also a date there. Notice that this happens to be the first row in our data set, game ID 1, and as we continue past this debugger statement, it'll catch at every subsequent row. Looking at the date here, we can see that it returns a more complicated date object. In JavaScript, to check for specific data types is somewhat cumbersome, and we have to basically use the instance of operator to do a Boolean check of what's on the left side with what's on the right side. So in this case, if d bracket date is indeed a JavaScript date object, this will return true. If not, it will return false. As we can see here, it has returned true. Now if we didn't have any assumption of what the variable on the left should be, we'll have to go through each of the JavaScript primitive types continuously running the instance of check. And looking at the attendance column here, we can see that it's 25,000 rather than the string 25,000. And just a note, in JavaScript, it being the flexible language it is, we can actually use dot notation to access the field of an object or the bracket notation. The one limitation with the dot notation is if your field happens to have a space in it. If so, you'll have to use the bracket notation with the string argument, but it's usually good practice to have all the keys of your object either be a single word or instead of spaces to use underscores. In this case, d.attendance returns the same value as d bracket string attendance close bracket. And you'll notice if we try to continue, the debugger repeatedly gets stopped within the extent function. Each time, d actually is a different object. In this case, I've continued a few times, so we're at game ID 6. Continuing one more time, d is now game ID 7, and so forth. So let's remove this debugger from our code since we don't want to go through all 800 plus rows of our data, and then continue to actually create the access objects from these extents and scales.